Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition, episode 73 of the Lab Epstein Hitting Podcast, back after a week hiatus. And today, because it is college baseball and softball recruiting season, we are discussing picking the right college. That and a lot more. Let me introduce professional evaluator, successful business owner, my former coach, friend, and co-host, fresh off his vacation slash work trip to Alaska. He was vacationing a little bit because I did see pictures of him ice fishing, Jake Epstein. Well, there's no ice. There's no ice. There's no ice fishing. No. I mean, my fly rod did develop a little bit of ice Mm -hmm. through the eyelets uh, early in the morning. But yeah, yeah, it was nice in Alaska, 40 40 degrees or so, 45 degrees. It was a blast. Got to work with the uh, Alaska Crush organization up there, softball organization. Um, Those kids were so eager. The coaches were all, we had a ton of coaches um, within that organization, which I mean, it's so beneficial to those players to all be on the same page. You know, they're all going to be on the same page doing the drills and what to look for and and what to fix. And, um, you know, from the eight-year-old players all the way up to the the 18U players. um, I don't know. It's when you get that consistency. I know we were talking off air about, you know, some of the the player development departments of of major league teams not being on the same page and and having confrontation. amongst the the hierarchy and then the the on-field guys and the hitting coaches and the or the pitching coaches um if you don't have a clear message it it doesn't work and so for whether you're a a a professional organization player development whether you're a college player development department or you're a softball you know travel club in alaska it's important to to keep the message the same amongst the different levels um, because as players progress from 10U to 12U to 14U or from A ball to double A to triple A, they're getting that consistent reinforcement that will get them to the big leagues faster or to the next level faster. We want to remind everybody, we did actually talk about that a couple of weeks ago when Kyle Bodie exited the Reds organization. That episode, previous episodes, all available in the archive for kind of sticking with the theme here because it is recruiting season for college baseball and softball for high school players and even college players who are looking to transfer. And keep in mind, too, that coming up, our Major League Baseball free agent season will be discussing every that top 10, every 10 free agents uh, that are out there for Major League Baseball and doing some annotations and hitting breakdowns. So um, we got a lot of good stuff coming up. Let me uh, touch on something first before we get into our main topic, though. The National League MVP, we could discuss the American League MVP, but I think it's more clear cut who it probably will be at this point. At least we know three guys who who it'll be and who you're safe picking if any of those three guys win. Aaron Judge, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Shohei Otani. I've kind of had I kind of have Judge Guerrero Jr. and Otani in that order. But you look on the National League side, Ep and Fernando Tatis Jr., Bryce Harper, Juan Soto, Freddie Freeman, and Austin Riley. They've all had great years. I want to just make a quick case for Bryce Harper. I don't think he's the National League MVP, but I do want to make a quick case for him. Tatis Jr., great year, 42 home runs as we talk now. I don't see it, though. Bryce Harper, though, uh, has a double and a home run. That was last night off Sandy Alcantara, Alcantara of the Marlins on Friday night. So 41 doubles, 35 home runs, 84 RBIs, 100 runs, 99 walks. No players since Albert Pujols in 2009, same year the Phillies made the World Series. We're talking about that, uh, that off the air, too, has matched those numbers, that criteria. And no Philly has ever done what Bryce Harper did as pertains to the numbers that I just talked about. And no outfielder has done that since Barry Bonds in 1998. Now, my National League MVP, because his team's in the postseason, because they had a lot more hurdles to jump, is uh, Freddie Freeman. But I think the National League race, you take out Fernando Tatis Jr., Harper, Soto, Freeman, Riley, any one of those guys could be the National League MVP. Yeah, you know, and it depends to you. You know, I like to, to put the MVP out as if you take that one player out of the lineup, out yes. of their everyday lineup, how is that team going to do? Well, I think if you take, um, you know, Harper out of that lineup, like the, the Phillies, and they didn't make the postseason, right? But they're probably 10 games worse, right? Maybe yeah. 20 games worse. Um, if you take Tatis out of that lineup, you're probably in that same boat. Like he, he means a lot to that team in terms of, you know, energy. Now he did play 
a lot in center field because of his shoulder. I think if he played every day at shortstop, I think Tatis is your MVP. Mm -hmm. Um, But then they, they flailed down the stretch too. So I don't know. I'm not going to make a call. I think um, you should have to be on a competitive team. Um, I think that's kind of what history has said, Um, but it doesn't need to be like, you look at Otani, you take Otani out. Good Lord. Yeah. Like the angels are worse than they are. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> way worse than they are because Which he's responsible for so many so many wins you know as a pitcher too so um i'm with you on freeman i i think you know his leadership plays a big role too on that team and not just you know what he does on the field and also with um they make the postseason and we've talked about that before with teams making the postseason you have to look at who is their most valuable player and then compare it to other possible most valuable player candidates throughout the league and compare those numbers. And I think Freddie Freeman should win it. Now, again, with Bryce Harper, I understand that he's put up his best year ultimately since 2015, yeah. right? I mean, that's probably that, yeah. that's probably fair. But I want to bring up one more point about that. The Phillies in that last series against the Braves, Harper went 0 for 11. It was the biggest series of the year. And they had opportunities to score. Mm-hmm. So that kind of – and I understand he's had a great year, but when you're making that much money, that, that 0 for 11 and your team could be on the cusp of making the postseason a chance to leave Atlanta up in the division standings. You're making all that money. You have to come through. You can't go 0 for 11. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, they, they, they don't choose those awards until later, you mm-hmm. know, and you're going to have players that are in the playoffs. And if they get really hot and, you know, if Freeman gets really hot in the playoffs or judge gets really hot in the playoffs, you know, all of a sudden that stock does play into it. And that hurts the guys that didn't make the playoffs, you know, that people kind of forgot because the playoffs are so long now, right? I mean, we're going to have a month's worth of playoffs here, um, you know, well into November. And I think people forget about, you know, the players they're not seeing on TV every night. I still have the Braves and the White Sox, by the way, in the World Series. So mark it down. 121 cool. p.m. Eastern time, October 2nd, the day we're recording this. I don't care which day you're listening, but October 2nd, the day we're recording this, my MVP of the National League, Freddie Freeman, my MVP of the American League, Aaron Judge, and my World Series pick, Braves and the White Sox. Braves representing the National League, White Sox representing the American League, no Brewers. I know you're wearing a Brewers hat today. I'm sorry. That's a shame. With that pitching staff, yeah. Well, what Boys happened to Devin hot. Williams? They haven't by hit the way? much this year, but if, if they they start to hit, it's going to be dangerous. What happened Brewers to Devin Williams, dangerous. by the way? Like, what's what's the deal? He hit that? a wall or something. He was so excited. Oh, he hit a right. Okay. He was Not so smart. excited. He like, yay! And oh, I broke my hand. Yeah. Broke yeah. My hand. I'm happy for the Cardinals. I want to make a little sidebar. I'm happy for the Cardinals. They stood their ground at the trade deadline, and they're on their way to the mm-hmm. postseason too. Hottest team right now, going into they're the postseason. So hot. Reminds me a yep. little bit of the uh, 2019 Washington Nationals, although this that mm-hmm. this team is a little more scarier because it's just they're they're clicking everywhere. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about the Cardinals. Why is that? Because <laughs> we're division. We're in the same division. What a time for your <laughs> your fax machine to go off. <laughs> what I'm not going to talk about the Cardinals. What is <laughs> Give me someone. Give me someone. Anyone. <laughs> Uh, be sure to subscribe to our podcast, Apple, Google, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and our YouTube channel, The Lab Epstein Hitting Podcast, with new episodes, previous archived episodes, and new content pretty much being uploaded every single day. It's funny how we have, find the time to do all that, but yeah, we find And I put out a lot of stuff come to playoffs because I yeah. get to watch more of the playoffs this time of year. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'll put some cool stuff on uh, you know, the Epstein Hitting Twitter page and uh, our YouTube stuff. Yeah. So again, the lab, something new, people. The our YouTube channel again, the Lab Epstein Hitting Podcast, and Epstein Hitting on YouTube also. That's how we make our living, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> well, we, <laughs> it's funny. You were one vacation from Alaska to Alaska, you know, one week hiatus, and you forget all the inside jokes that we had from the previous episode. Oh yeah, we, we make so much money off YouTube. There you go. Who so makes the, money off YouTube? I, I don't understand. There's commercials every time I go on it, but who's I know. I don't think the creators are made. Some of the creators are. I think we have to have like Cardi B, we you do. know, tweet our stuff out. Or Driveline. They would they would help us too. Um, I want to uh, move on really quickly to something. Um, Urban Meyer has started out his NFL head coaching career yeah. 0-4. To me, he's always been a college coach. Now, 
I look at people like, say, an Andy Reid, NFL lifestyle, fits him, his coaching career. He started in college, but he's pretty much carved a coaching career and a Hall of Fame one at that as an assistant coming up through, most notably Green Bay and then Philadelphia, now Kansas City. And then you look on the other side, Nick Saban, Lincoln Riley. They love the college atmosphere, playing on Saturdays, Saturday nights. They love recruiting. They love doing all of that stuff. The college atmosphere fits them. And I'm looking at Urban Meyer and I'm saying, I just don't see it as an NFL head coach. He's a Hall of Fame college football coach, but he is he is a, a Hall of Fame college football coach, not so much NFL. Okay, now how does that correlate to baseball? I'm looking now at organizations hiring data people. I'm looking at organizations hiring college coaches on the pitching and hitting side. In fact, I have a friend whose brother, both guys played professionally. The Twins did not renew a couple of years ago, renew his contract as a pitching coach in their minor league farm system. They opted to go with a younger college guy who was more up to date, I guess, with the data and analytics. Okay, fine. Now I'm going to ask you. From that. Arkansas? I'm sorry. Is that the guy that came from Arkansas that the might have been tired? Yes, yes. Stu Clyburn, by the way, was the guy I'm referring to. Is yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, long story short, I, let me. I'll bring this back around. I want to ask you because you coached collegiately at the Division One level. You have coached professional players. You evaluate professional players currently. What do you see as the biggest gap? Because, again, hiring season is coming along here uh, in, profession, in professional baseball. What do you see as the biggest gap between college coaches and really any sport, but specifically baseball, and college coaches jumping to the pro game and vice versa? Because now we're starting to see professional coaches jumping to the college game. We're seeing a lot of college and succeed, by the way. And we're seeing a lot of college coaches come into the pro game and not succeed as much. Why is that? You know, uh, when I look at football, Mm -hmm. you know, in the Urban Meyer situation, I I look at in the NFL, everybody's good. You have the best athletes. When you're in college and you can recruit well, when you line up, you know, your team on one side of the ball against another team, you know, Ohio State and Florida were considerably better athletes than everyone else that they played, you know, aside from Alabama or whatnot. So there's a distinct advantage in being a high profile college coach with uh, with five star athletes on every position. OK, I mean, that's just the way it is. You, you a, a team that has three star athletes. In D1 mm-hmm. is not going to be able to compete with them. You know, they're going to have to have something special happen that day, turnovers or um you know, I'm totally outcoached, which you're probably not going to outcoach that much ability. I think when you're in professional baseball, it's it's the same way. I, I think that college coaches tend to um, overcoach mm-hmm. when it comes to the college player. I think they do that because maybe that college player doesn't have as much ability as, you know, somebody that's signed to play professional baseball where you just kind of like let them grow and you, you let them be their person. Yeah. I think college College head coaches, um, for the most part, they 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 overcoach the the game on the field as well. They want to micromanage everything. They want to call every pitch. They want to call every pickoff. Yeah. They want to call the signs, the shortstop, who's covering the base. They want to call you know bunts and squeezes and safety squeezes and push bunts. And I think in the pro game, they they let players play and kind of figure it out and, and find their strengths or, and weaknesses. So. I would say, you know, that's that, that's my um, my opinion. I doesn't yeah. mean it's the right opinion, but um, that's my opinion when I look at, at definitely baseball, college baseball versus professional baseball. So you think really ultimately it's the overcoaching that does these these guys in? I'm not a fan of overcoaching um, mm-hmm. once the game starts. Okay. Okay. Me and John so, wouldn't agree on that. So okay. You prepare the out of your players mm-hmm. during the week or during practice time uh, during film time yeah. but when players hit the field you have to let them perform and you have to take the shackles off them and and um, you know let their ability you recruited them for a reason um, if they're not ready you don't play them right. right if you have to hold their hand to score runs then you know I understand there's times to bunt and whatnot but you know I really think that you know the whole college calling pitches and pickoffs and all that kind of stuff gets a a little bit over, you know, I don't mind calling pickoffs, you know, or different sets, but 
there's so many signs and there's so much information going into players' heads instead of just playing the game that they have been playing their whole lives. I think it creates a lot of clutter and it just shackles everybody. It just puts them into this tight mm-hmm. um, environment where they yeah. can't blossom. Not, not everyone is like that, but um, you know, I, I do feel like college coaches coaching college because they still want to play. Mm-hmm. You know, they still want that. Oh, I want that control over that player. That's my little remote out there. Boop, boop, boop. You know, I'm going to give different signs here and okay. Push bunch of first base. Yeah because I see that first baseman and instead of letting that player think for themselves that maybe I should push bunt here because my, that first baseman and the second baseman are back pretty far. Yeah. And you've often heard too, with, with Nick Saban and, and when Chip Kelly went to the pro game and I mean, you're hearing whispers with urban Meyer right now about how overcoaching is a big part of their program. And it just doesn't resonate with the pro guys. Yeah. The pro football players. I am. And I have no idea. I'm not right. there. I'm not on the sideline. I, um, mm-hmm. but I, a lot I, of those, I, but I a lot of those speak. attributes and a lot of those factors, I think they play into professional baseball coaches. For sure. College yeah. When, pro. when you're a college coach, it's like, oh, what are their grades? Are they going to class? Are right. They yeah, more, you're more of a babysitter. Nutrition? You're an educator. You're a babysitter. Yeah. You're constantly like helping that player through. Where mm-hmm. when it's the pros, it's like a business man. You miss, you miss the bus to the to you know, to the field or whatever yeah. from the hotel, like you're on your, you better get a cab quick. Right. Um, right. And you have to let people grow up. And I think um, sometimes as college coaches, we, we want to um, comfort them mm-hmm. maybe a, a little bit more than they need to be. Well, speaking of college, a great segue. And don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on social media at Jim Tara at Epstein Hitting, Twitter and Instagram, and email us your questions, Jimbo Podcast 21 at gmail.com. Today, our topic is picking the right college. Yes, 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 yes. It's recruiting season, September, October. We've had previous episodes. Go back and listen into the archives uh, about college recruiting. And today, uh, picking the right college. Certainly, uh, there's a lot of decisions that go into it. You're going to be experiencing that in a couple of years as well, correct? <laughs> we'll see. Time flies. <laughs> we will see for sure. Yeah, I want to circle back a little bit on on what I said about you know college coaching over coaching. I'm talking about game coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, college coach, their job is to prepare. It's to be out on the field. It's to teach. Mm-hmm. Um, it's to it, you know teach everything, whether it's mechanics, hitting or throwing, whether it's speed, whether it's agility, whether it's getting drums, re, uh, jumps, relays, cutoffs, blocking balls, framing balls as a catcher. So I'm not saying you you just lay back and let your kids play. You coach the tar out of them at practice, right? Know, and it pregame and then when the field comes on let's go ahead and, and let these kids play so i don't want you to think like you know you overcoach your job as a college coach is to get players better okay yeah. and it is in pro ball too but you also when the lights come on and the, and the first pitch is thrown you have to let them be who they are yeah well a part of the picking the right college too is seeing mm-hmm. how things are done practice wise seeing how that player can progress and get better at least we're just talking right now strictly on the field when getting recruited and you've got multiple offers or you've got a decision to make, you're taking all these things into consideration. How does the coach coach in game? How does that coach and his coaching staff coach practicing and practices? How hands-on are they? What's the practice schedule look like? That all is encompassing to the decision that you're ultimately going to make in picking the right college. Yeah. And you have to know what kind of player you are too. I mean, if you're a, you know, a five-star recruit, well, mm-hmm. you can, you know, we'll say it's uh, collegiate softball. You can go to Oklahoma and UCLA and mm-hmm. Alabama or Texas A&M, wherever. I mean, you can go to these big schools who are going to bring you in and you can ask those questions. Yeah. You know, what does it look like? I'm going to sit here and watch practice. And then I'm going to sit and watch a practice when they don't know that I'm here, um, you know, where they're not entertaining me. Mm-hmm. So, Yes. Ask, you know, talk to the players. You're going to be involved with players. You're going to go to dinner with the players. You're going to go to a game with some of the players. You know, what is it like? Um, You know, do they, do they, do all the players hang out? So I I remember when I was in college, we would tailgate for every football game. Mm -hmm. The entire team would tailgate together. Not some guys would go hang out with fraternity friends or whatever. No, the whole team was together and it's very different now. You know, what is it like now? Well, these three or these four, 
hang out here and they watch the game in this section of the football team. Then we have some over here. So you can kind of get a, a sense of the community within, within the team. Yeah. Um, you know, what are your philosophies on hitting? You know, what is, mm-hmm. um, you know, what are you guys looking for, you know, offensively, where do you see me fit in, you know, mm-hmm. um, in terms of uh, playing time early, how many other infielders do you have or outfielders or catchers do you have? Um, you know, have you recruited? How many are you recruiting right now? Blah, blah, blah. Um, if you're on the other side of the equation and you're trying to court the college because maybe you're not the, you know, one of the three best players in your entire state, you know, then it's like, okay, where do I, where do I fit in? You know, I'm not going to, they're not calling me left and right for, for visits, right? I have to put my name out there. You know, I have to go to their camps. I have to go to their recruiting um, you know, events that they maybe have over the summer to be seen. And then all of a sudden, wow, we, we really like you. You know, I'm glad you came out to this. You know, you weren't on our radar. We like the way you move. Then you can kind of start those conversations of, um, you know, how many out-of-state players do you bring in? How many in-state players do you have walk-ons? You know, do you have preferred walk-ons? Um, how many players are going to be at fall ball? So, I mean, you, you could go to a college, a, a Division One. We'll, we'll just stay, say baseball because I'm, I'm more familiar with the coaching side of that. Yeah. But where there's, you know, you have 35 man roster, 25 travel, right? And all of a sudden there's 60 kids that show up for fall ball. Well, you can do the math on that. 25 of those players aren't going to be there after the semester. So are you sure. one of those 25 players, you know, yeah. and, 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 you know, you can show up and they'll say, oh, sure, come walk on. And you can have that mindset that I'm going to earn, earn that position. I'm going to do, and you might. But also know that if they brought 40 kids into fall ball instead of 60, you obviously have a much better chance for success if you're a non-scholarship athlete. So, um, you know, that kind of stuff is really important. And, and if you do something like that, make sure it's a school that you enjoy. You don't want to yeah. transfer is the worst. I mean, that is such, you know, paperwork and you have housing and you have, uh, you know, books and fees and all this stuff. And then you got to move out at the semester and stuff. You know, if it's a place you enjoy being at, if you get cut, if you don't make that roster to come back in the spring, are you okay with that? Mm-hmm. You know, are you okay going to that school? You know, it, it, it's much different. You know, there's 11.7 scholarships. And like I said, that sometimes there's 60 players out there on the field. So you can do the math on that. Yeah. There's a lot of walk-ons. And if you're somebody they give a 50% scholarship to, you can feel pretty good that you're going to be back. But if you fail, they're going to find a way to push you out and get that money back. So nothing is guaranteed. You have to be a good person. You have to be a good worker. You got to be a good student. You got to be a good teammate. And if you check all those boxes, you're probably going to fit in most places um, that, that you attempt to, to play. So I wrote a couple of things down. And the one question I want to get to, what's the difference between, because you, you've coached softball players, you coached at the collegiate level at Mizzou. By the way, that kicker, was it last weekend? He kicked like a 60-yarder to tie the game for Mizzou. Yeah, they're losing by like uh, 17 touchdowns already to Tennessee. Yeah, that, but that kicker, he's a big boy. I saw him. I said, he he's make, good. He's yeah, going to no, make this good. kick, and he made it 60 yards. Yeah, we're just pulling for the kicker now. Yeah. Um, what's the difference between softball and baseball recruiting from where you sit? Uh, uh, so- softball, there's way less players, right? Mm-hmm. So you're going to have, you know, typically a little bit more money mm-hmm. per player to give out. It's not as much as, uh, you know, meat market in the fall, you know, yeah, with, right. with players right. there. You know, I'm not going to say they're nicer people uh, <laughs> that mm-hmm. coach softball, but um, it's just a little bit more uh, above board in terms of, uh, you know, come on in. Yeah, they, they'll have and I don't know what their roster limits are, but, you know, they're not bringing in nearly as many people and they'll usually recruit, you know, only, you know, maybe five or six players per year. Um, new players to kind of fit in with the program. So I, I feel that softball is a way different game. It is so different. It is so, um, cause I got to, you know, I got to spend some time, you know, some Texas A&M games and some of their practices and kind mm-hmm. of see how they run things. And it's, um, it's fun. Like college softball, they're, they're having fun before the game. You know, the girls are smiling and they're singing and, um they're happy and 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 a lot of times in in college baseball it's very 
okay, we got to get our work done. You know, it's very yeah. tense and it's, you know, people aren't having as much fun. And I, I don't know. And maybe that's part of it. Maybe it's because they're, um, they, they have the players they want and they're not constantly trying to bring in new people to, to, to force other people out. And because of that, there's, you know, a good community of players. So um, again, I don't have a ton of experience with that in mm-hmm. softball, just from what I've seen with, um, you know, and I, I had spent some time with Alabama too, but you know, that it's from the outside, you know, looking in, um, right. but everyone has their, their groups, um, baseball and softball guys that get along, girls that get along, um, people they don't care for, but that's a team environment. I mean, you have that at the big league level, um, right. you know, people that, that en- enjoy each other's company and people that can't stand other people. So it's, you know, how do we mesh to make the team better? Um, it's okay if I don't like you. I mean, my dad and Reggie Jackson got into a, you know, a fist fight, you know, um, it was kind of one-sided, but you know, you should look one-sided to like, one-sided to who though? Uh, big Mike almost killed there him. You go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I you, there's a, if, if you YouTube it, there was an article somebody wrote, I don't know, I think it was in Sports Illustrated or something. And it was like the day Reggie Jackson, like got his ass kicked or something like that. And they interviewed, you know, all the old guys that were in there. And yeah. apparently big Mike had to be like, choked out of it wow. because he was yeah pummeling someone so anyway it's a really funny read if you mm-hmm. if you uh read it but that's how it is and what did they do they went out and won a world series together so did they ever speak after after yeah. years years later yeah I, in fact i remember meeting reggie on multiple occasions and oh, okay him being very cordial and them talking about you know hunting and stuff like yeah. that so um, I didn't know about the other thing till much later. So you mentioned some questions there uh, about five minutes ago uh, to ask coaches. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's let's dive into more specifics. What questions when you're trying to pick the right college and you're almost in a way getting recruited, but you're also doing the recruiting as well. What questions are you asking? What questions should you come equipped with to ask those coaches that will help better um, help you make a decision? Yeah, I think always knowing uh, what a daily routine looks like Mm -hmm. at that school, Um, because some schools have their own weight rooms, some schools share weight rooms, you know, do we have to wake up at 5am to, to do our workouts, or Mm -hmm. can we work out um, before practice or after practice, because we don't have to share it with someone else? Are there, you know, indoor facilities we have access to for, for extra hitting or things like that. So, you know, what is a daily schedule kind of look like um you know what what kind of you know uh, you know philosophies do you have in terms of you know hitting or defense you know do we do a lot of individual work right um with the coaches is it small group training things like that um you know academically do we have an advisement staff that will help us you know get tutors if we need help um is there a liaison between the the academic department and us that we can go through to line up um extra tests you know or things like that like hey we're gonna we're gonna miss a test is there an athletic department that says look um you know jane smith is going to be out of town from thursday to sunday and she has a test on thursday um can we find a time to take it you know virtually on the bus at the hotel we'll have a proctor or could she take it when she gets back so yeah. Um, some large schools have great different at Mizzou. We had a, a wonderful staff that we would, the coaching staff, we would get to meet with um, to make sure that all the players were, you know, in a good spot. You know, how many tests do they have left? What's their grade? What does their test schedule look like? Mm-hmm. You know, how can we help them? Okay. You know, you have a big load coming up. Why don't you come in and get extra work? So I would hit with guys um, like early in the morning because I knew they had to study later in the day. So we would excuse them from like regular practice so they could come in during their own time and get their work in and then study. So, you know, is there that kind of academic support yeah. through the university um, or not? And then, you know, the other stuff, like do most of the players live together? Is there, you know, a kind of a common apartment complex? Most of the team lives when they're not in the dorms anymore, or how do you set me up with someone in the dorm? Am I going to live with a, you know, another athlete, another softball or baseball player? or, um, you know, just regular students. So, you know, all, as much information as you can gather from each specific school is going to be beneficial in making your decision. And, and I mean, advi- academic advisors are huge on that too. I'm trying to figure they that really out are. as well. Yeah. yeah, it is. And you have to know what kind of student you are. I mean, if you're a, 
you know, a really good student and you're going to, uh, you know, not a highly academic school, you're probably going to be okay. But if you're pushing the envelope um, and it's, mm-hmm. it's a tough academic, you know, having somebody lead you into the right um, field of study, um, the amount of units that you need, maybe we take a lighter load in the spring and then we'll take a summer class online or something to even out your credits. You know, there's all different ways to do it. And when you're on your own, it's hard. Yeah. Um, but when yeah. you have people with experience, it's, it's uh, very simple to navigate. Yeah. Uh, how do you make the decision if you're getting drafted to, what if you get drafted? Mm-hmm. How do you make, and I know the money's a factor, obviously, but how do you ultimately make that decision in wanting to go to college or if you go sign and go to pro ball, that's part of picking the right college as well. Yeah. I mean, it, it <laughs> has to do with, um, you know, what, what kind of student are you? Some people yeah. hate school, right? And that's mm-hmm. just the way it is. Like, I don't want to go to college. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to study anymore. After my senior year, I'm done. Mm-hmm. And whether they give them $25,000 or, you know, $1.5 million, I'm going to go play baseball because that's what I'm going to do. And then you have other people that are, you know, highly academic or they, you know, they have offers at really good institutions, you know, really good colleges to, to play for. And they'll use that as leverage, obviously, to get more money in the draft. But they also think they can get better. I mean, I look at the University of Arkansas's new player development facility. And I'm like, who's not going to get better going there? Mm-hmm. Like, how yeah. can you not get better? That is way better than any professional minor league affiliate you're ever going to play for. Mm-hmm. And you have 24-hour access to weight room, cages, treatment. You want to go sit in the hot tub, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> whatever it yeah. might be, nutrition. I mean, you know what nutrition's like in the minor leagues. It's got awful. Like, right. Like right. Something, something needs to change there for sure. So you're going to get better. Like if you go to, um, you know, a, a quality institution and you feel like you're going to be a better person in three years and develop more and mature more and go to school because you enjoy school, do it. If you don't enjoy school, then even if, you know, and we'll use Arkansas as an example, because in my opinion, those are the best facilities in college baseball. Um, so maybe, you know, Arkansas says, oh, here's the number one player out of the state of Florida. We're going to yeah. offer you a full ride, even though they know he's probably not going to sign with them. You know, this guy's like, wow, that's a really great place. But you know what? I don't want to go to class. I really don't. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's, those are the kind of things that you have to see. I mean, some people want to go to college football games. You know, they want to go to coffee shops. You know, they want to they want to embrace that college atmosphere, which I urge everyone to do. Yeah. Um, and some people don't care. Mm-hmm. Some people are like, I want to play. I'm really good at this game. I want to play. And in four years, I might be able to get to the big leagues mm-hmm. instead of four years having to start my minor league journey. Yeah. And if you have enough money to live on for those four years while you're working your way through the minor league so you can afford decent nutrition mm-hmm. um, and, and afford to train in the off season. Mm-hmm then it's the right choice for you. And you talk about players need to be paid more, but let's not gloss over the nutrition aspect of, of pro ball too. It's, it's amazing yeah, how I, I mean, some I, of these schools are, are so well advanced, like in Arkansas, some of these SEC schools, even some yeah. of the schools out West, they're so advanced when it comes to the nutrition and their player development. Yeah. I mean, even if you just paid the minor leaguers the same, but you put them on a nutrition plan and covered their meals, yeah. So they don't lose money mm-hmm. um, during the year, during the minor league year. It would pay dividends. So let's, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, let's finally, uh, let's wrap it up, wrap up the, uh, the topic here and let's bring in the pillars of picking the right college, in your opinion. What are those pillars? You like that? I love that word, by the way. Pillars. The pillars of picking the right college. Yeah. Um, is there a need for you? Mm-hmm. Yes, always. Um, There's always a need for me. I mean, we're, we're talking about playing, right? Not just taking college, but playing. Well, there's going to be a need college, for me right? in a couple of weeks when we do my mechanical breakdown series. So. A, lot <laughs> a lot of needs. You better, you better get the dust off. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, you know, is there a need for me at that school? Do they want me? Mm-hmm. Like, can I, can I help that team? I watched them practice a few times. Can I close my eyes and visualize myself playing on that field alongside those athletes? Boom. You know, that's, that's really important. If, if I'm a stretch player and I'm not sure I'm going to make a team, do I like the school and the, and the schools that it has to offer, you know, journalism or, you know, medicine or business, you know, whatever those different schools are, do I see myself fitting here? Even if I don't play, Mm -hmm. Um, maybe I'm on the team, but 
I'm not going to play a whole lot. Does that matter to me? Right. I'm on the roster. Maybe I play once a week. Maybe I'm a backup catcher who plays, you know, the second game of a doubleheader on the weekend on a Saturday. Um, am I okay with that? Um, am I better than everyone else on the field? You know, maybe I'm not at the right place. You know, maybe I'm a big fish in a small pond, but it's a highly academic school. Maybe it's an Ivy, you know, maybe it's a military academy. Um, you know, is that going to play, a, you know, a part of my decision? You know, hey, right. I could I right. could go to the, you know, West Point, play baseball. Awesome. But I'm going to West Point for crying out loud. Like I'm set up for life. I don't need to play professional baseball or I'm a dude that wants to play professional baseball. Well, you go to West Point, it might be tough, right? You, you, you know, you're going to need to get a waiver to go ahead and play pro ball and, and not go into the military for a few years after. So, um, you know, definitely the, the, do I want to play softball? You know, so I'm, I'm speaking more on the, because there's a lot more players that are on the bubble than there are sh for sure players. Sure. Right. Like there's, you know, if you look at a, a you know, a regular, you know, 18 U softball player or, you know, baseball player, you know, the majority of those players are like, am I going Juco? Am I going division one, but smaller? Am I mm -hmm. going D2, NAIA, D3? That's the majority of players. The studs are the studs, right? The Golden yeah. Goose, they're going to go to wherever, Vanderbilt and Arkansas, Mississippi State and whoever, right? Georgia, um, Stanford. So it's, it's everyone else that has to make that, that really hard decision of, um, is this the right spot for me? You know, am I stretching? Am I like, when I went, um, to college, I was not mature yet. Okay. I was, I wasn't small, but I wasn't strong yet. Like I was still a kid, you know, I was about a year and a half behind, uh, you know, physically than most players. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a power five school, Mizzou was the only power five school that recruited me. Okay, I was recruited by, you know, Loyola Marymount, UC Santa Barbara, St. Mary's, I guess Cal Berkeley, but that's because I was a legacy. You know, my dad was, mm -hmm. a, was a, a Cal guy. So all of a sudden I was like, okay, I'll go there. And then all of a sudden, boom, I exploded and became, um, you know, a, a starter, right? And a, a pretty good player, an all-conference player. But before that, it was a stretch. I'm like, I'm going into this place. I better kick some ass. Yeah. Or it's not going to work. Or you go into a place where you're better than everyone else and then you don't work your tail off. So you have to find that that perfect situation for you. But I think the most important thing is what is my what do I want to do is, is playing every day the most important thing for me? Is it playing in a nice stadium yeah. or a stadium that holds 400 people? Is it having access to a great indoor facility and player development um, facilities? and an academic advice. Is that important to me? Or is just playing collegiate baseball or softball important for me? Mm -hmm. So you got to figure that out. I mean, you can't lie to yourself, you know, and I'm telling you, if you close your eyes, can you envision yourself playing in that stadium, playing mm -hmm. on that field? Is that the right place? Or yeah. is it not the right place? You know, should you, should you hold out for something else or go to a JUCO? So um, softball is easy because they're not going to play pro. Right. I mean, they, I mean, a very small percentage, but they're not well, going to bring that dollars. up too with, with women's sports. I think the recruiting is a little bit easier because you don't have that. Well, will I go pro? Will I, or won't I get yeah. a chance to go pro in the back of your mind? Again, we've talked about this before on the show. They know girls sports. They know when yeah. it ends. They know that right. there is an end date. And I, I think that makes it a little bit easier when you're trying to pick a school that's the best fit for you academically and athletically. And they're more team oriented because of it. Right. Right. You know, because that's all they got. Mm -hmm. Like, let's win the conference. Let's win the conference. Excuse me, the conference tournament. Let's go to the postseason. Mm -hmm. For baseball, it's like, ah, I just want to make sure I do really, really well. Yeah. So I can and be scouts seen. If we make the me. postseason, I get to play a few more games. Mm -hmm. And if I get hot around draft time, maybe that'll increase my stock. Yeah. Or um, I can go off to the Cape Cod League mm -hmm. and get a good, good summer right, league to me. look at me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Very true. So go to where you want to be. Yes. That's the best advice I can give you. Yes. you, know, if, you if playing college softball um, or college baseball is the most important thing, go to a D2 school, go to a D3 school, go to a NAI school and play and have fun and get your degree. Mm -hmm. If you would rather, um, and I get this a lot, players that I work with that quite honestly are low division one uh, level players, you know, they could play at uh, Cal State Bakersfield, you know, or some, you know, it's a really small school. 
Um, but you know what? They want to go to UCLA yeah. because they want to go to football games and basketball games and they want to join a fraternity or sorority. You know, do what you want to do. That's a big sacrifice. Do I want to go to a big state school and have that full college um, experience yeah. or do I want to play a sport? Is that more important to me? Um, I mean, I have a, a, a daughter that has no desire to go to a large school. Mm-hmm. No, no desire to go and sit in a football stadium with a hundred thousand people and cheer on their team and go to parties and sororities and whatever, where that's what I wanted to do. Like I, I wanted that big, you know, I wanted that big college atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And so I did it, but only, you know what that's like. If you don't care about that, go play, go play it. You know, what's right. now? Yeah. They don't have a program that anymore. Of, that stings. Thanks. Oh, oh. Oh, they have All a great right. basketball school. Great. There you go. Go there and play basketball. Go to we'll watch a basketball game. You know, or go. Basketball I mean, there's all those small fun. schools in uh, the Carolinas, right? You know, I mean, uh, was not Emory. Emory's in like. Uh, no, Emory's in Florida. Florida. Um, you can choose one California, Sonoma State's one. Uh, Mount Olive, yeah. right? It's a great D2 sure. school. Mount Olive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah University of Tampa. Right. I mean, they're small. Well, Rollins, that's see, I mean, uh, Rollins. Yes. Tampa. I don't know. That's pretty intense. They get, I mean, they, yeah. they, they're really good. They should be a D one. They're the deuce, right? I mean, they D2 are, is a lot of D one dropouts. So you you can argue that they're that. better than USF George Mason yeah. though. That's one George Mason's one. Mm-hmm. So anyway. Yeah. All right. Um, and also too, next week we are, so r- right there, we told, we gave you great advice and next week we're going to break down and debunk any college recruiting myth that is out there next week because there's a lot out there a lot of myths when it comes to baseball and softball recruiting am i right sure you mean sure (laughs) you mean like everyone here has a full ride like something like that because it's vanderbilt you brought up camps earlier in the show yeah. We're going to talk about that. Is that a myth? Yeah. You have to go to one of these camps to get Different, recruited? Yeah. I don't know. Ooh, that's good, Jim. Okay. Now I understand your question. No, it's not a question, sir. It's I a thought topic. We were reviewing your swing. It's week. a topic of next week. No, no. See, here's what we're doing next week. And people watching on the YouTube side can see it on the graphic. We're doing college recruiting myths, right? Mm-hmm. And then after that, we're doing our second overrated, underrated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to be break. You can't wait to break down my swing, can you? You no, want, I'm, I'm no, you want to tear me apart today. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to be breaking down my, my swing. And then after that, we get into our free agency period, Major League Baseball. Yes. Did Simeon only sign a one-year deal? He did. Mm-hmm. We'll be breaking down his swing. Yeah. Carlos Correa, we'll be breaking down his swing. Got some good ones. Yeah. Let's do it. So that's coming up here on the show. Next week, though, college recruiting myths. Ep finally understands the. Uh, you you were staring at me it's a hard for so. Question. You were staring it's at me for question. so long that I thought you lost your audio. How's that? That would have been a good excuse. <laughs> Just that confusion. Been, that would have been a good little joke on me. All right. Um. What's coming up at the lab before we let everybody go on this uh, lovely day, new week? Coming up at the lab. Yes. Certifications coming up at the lab. You better get your reservation in. Get, get two weeks, mm-hmm. two weeks from today. Two, I'm sorry, two weeks from the second of October when we're recording this. Right. So we uh, today. we're excited for that. I got a bunch of high school coaches, mm-hmm. college coach, yeah, one or two college coaches, and some Canadians are coming down if they allow them to leave the country, right? Um, to go to Texas and then back. They may just not get back, but that's okay. They'll be armed with a lot of knowledge to help their their players. So right. yeah, certifications coming up, um, as well as you know what we do every day, mm-hmm. train players to get better on the field. Yes, and where do they looking good in the locker room? Where do they go to uh, for all this information? They go to the lab bcs.com. Right, right. I'm what's the f- what's the phone number? Program. I'm sorry, I the forgot. Phone again. number is nine seven nine five four five forty six hundred. If you dial it, it might not go through though. Why is that? Because I just made up that number. The lab bcs.com. That's the one. That's the one right there. All right. Well, and don't forget to email us your questions, Jimbo Podcast 21 at gmail.com. Follow us on social media at Jim Tara at Epstein Hitting. We are done for today. 
Have a wonderful, wonderful week, and we will see you next week. Goodbye.